Yeah, so another, yeah, another cir he circular was talk, people. was definitely inspiration on all the different techniques and crazy stories of how this can be a really powerful package. What, what I didn't like was, damn, there is no magic bullet, super <laughs> replicable <laughs> business yeah. model that, but there really is. I just haven't found it. As far as the replication thing, with uh, maybe the specific business models aren't replicable and the specific species aren't replicable, but the process is for finding out process, yeah. what you, species you can do and what your market is, that's what's replicable. So there is something that you can mm -hmm. take and make go viral from that. But yeah, yeah, the workshop is good. Even though any business is a business. And so what works in one business will work in another business. It, it, it know, will work? It will work. It, if you watch your principles of cash flow and things like that, that's the whole key mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. cash flow. Mm -hmm. That you don't spend mm -hmm. too much money, you don't have anything to adjust for the mm -hmm. problems that will mm -hmm. cause. So you gotta watch that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was phenomenal. Phenomenal the crowd that was here. Um, phenomenal the volume of information and the volume of energy, uh, which is really, in. Uh, Astounding. I expect you to sleep to Wednesday. <laughs> like, that's really amazing. Yeah, I mean, I my points were like being able to interact with both of you on a human level mm -hmm. um, and not a like a presentation or a YouTube video or even a book, but to like actually be around other people that were engaged with these subjects and to like be able to ask questions on a, just a conversational level. I just, um, I find it really uh, empowering to see that you all are both like homo sapiens with hearts and lungs and eyes that like <laughs> what was that first word you said yeah. <laughs> watch it boy <laughs> and uh, I wish I'd learned some of this when I was younger but you know I was busy doing other stuff raising a family <laughs> and now I'm just really tired. <laughs> well, you'll still be raising a family. Oh, just a different kind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, it's leaving a legacy for the, the grandkids, you know. Thanks. So, So that they can say, oh yeah, Grandma Dawn did that. <laughs> Okay. But we need this information. Yeah. This is oh, like yeah. way yeah. okay. And that's what, one thing I like to do. I like to farm, but I also want to propagate it. I, I want to do as much as I can to propagate it. And even for free, I'll talk for free just to get it out there. We need it because there's going to be, we're, we're close to when the hits the fan because, you know, fossil fuels, you know, what's going to happen? Who's going to, can't eat corn? That's industrial corn. I, I grab someone and it's like, what this tastes bad? Oh, this is not food feed. This is for for chemical, you know, for farm, and it's like it's a yeah, and plus it's even well. So yeah, it's it's we're in we're in real dire straits. I don't know if it's too late or not, but I have my plan. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I really like the the specifics of of how you're doing your orchard. You know, you, you've got the 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 NAP that was that was just a oh so helpful. yeah yeah, and, and then the the shrubs and. And just the specifics of that really have gotten me motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the information we glean from this is probably in two days more information on the orcharding than we've compiled in, I don't know, three years with all the seminars we've been to. Yeah. Missouri Organic, Columbia. Uh, and like this is my first exposure to permaculture or anything like that, so it was it's great. I mean, I think you got me inspired. Like, I feel I want to learn more, and I'm like, uh, the way you explain things, and it just things make sense, you know, in a way it was just logical, and like when you were explaining like the various techniques, but, like pruning and training and all that, and it, it was great. I mean, and, and you just make it easy for everybody. Like, easy for me, I don't know anything, you know. You have people that have a lot of experience, I have not. So, thank you. And I haven't really felt this excited since, like, um, you know, working in, in tech, you know, early in tech, you know, I was in the tech industry in Silicon Valley, and it just, it just, but it feels like it's pretty much on par with those people. In fact, even better because we're solving like real problems that that are worldwide, you know, solving the food issues and climate issues, which is even more pressing than technology. Uh, your 
two days was just packed full of information. I didn't know a lot about orcharding um, before I started the workshop, but you know, I feel like I know enough to get started now, and I can't wait to you know take some of these ideas back to uh, people who I know who have some land and uh, you know do what you said, just two trios and start it up. So uh, so yeah, just very thankful. Also, just really happy to learn techniques and not formulas, um, and that I'm always just very skeptical when I hear someone trying to give me information about a place they've never seen uh, for something that's going to make me money, so I'm glad to learn those kinds of skills that I can apply to particular situations. Stefan, I can't thank you enough. Um, I think you have this amazing combination that I've rarely seen uh, and I've taught and you know, been around teachers, which is you have the knowledge and you have this incredible ability to communicate mm -hmm. and to get people excited and to help us absorb knowledge and actually want to you know, run home and get hands on. So that is just priceless. After you do something for a while, you realize that Personally, I would say the orchard doesn't excite me like it used to. Uh, I've rarely stayed on project for more than three years on anything. This is the longest I've ever done anything in my life. And there's probably every year a couple of times I want to quit and move on and do something else. And it's really thanks to these kind of events that I realized, okay, you know, this is worth sticking to a little bit. I'm not saying I jump ship and you know, I, I just, I, I'm no longer doing it for myself. That's what I'm realizing is it's, it's not a matter of what, you know, what I want to get out of it. It's what people need. And so it's re this is really the only reason I keep on now doing this. Because the next thing I want to do is green the deserts and restore the oceans. Mm -hmm. So that's my next I think, we'll project. Be, we'll I just want to save you. 25% of the world's deserts, green them, and I want to restore 10% of the 200 mile limit oceans. And so yeah, those are the small goals. And this 1,000, 1,050 is the first step towards it. So I really want to get that done. I have four years left. You know, and it's got to happen, and I know it will now, because I know and there's a lot of people. Please feel free that you're definitely in a, a really growing community of people looking to do very, very similar things to you. And I'm glad that when you get together, you realize, wow, we're not alone. Yeah. Like, we're all feeling like kooks in our own situations away, because you go, what I'm thinking about is so different from what anybody else is doing. But when you get together you're like this, you go, you know, maybe I, I feel kooky, but at least I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> and so that helps, I know, because yep. I didn't want to tell anybody for a long time what I was doing, because it's like, okay, I know I'm a kook doing this, but when there's nobody to look around and feel like we're, we're all in this together, uh, you feel a little lonely. Mm -hmm. So this is great, because I see that, yeah, you know, we're, we're not alone, and it's starting. There's there's virtually a movement, and we're all pretty well here. I think everybody here was talking about it being in a, uh, a rural or a, at most, suburban environment. But there's one strand of it that is really going, and that's kind of my next push, is to bring these things right into the city. Okay. I'm saying a lot of some of you heard, like the next project, one of the immediate ones is a hundred kilometers from Montreal, mm -hmm. so imagine a hundred kilometers of these food f of these orchards, but along any linear thing. And cities are full of linear bike paths and pedestrian paths and so on. So, like you're saying, when you know when when the thing hits the fan, cities have three days of food. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no reserves. You can't turn to the trees for food. What happens then? So I'm just saying, look, we need this. <laughs> yep. Then mm -hmm. we really need this, and cities need it way more. Mm -hmm. So I really need you guys to get up to speed and get up to speed fast, mm -hmm. because you are going to be, you know, I look at it as I'm training the trainers now. That's all. Like you guys have to get on this, 
get practiced, get doing, and get started to, to take people under your wings and show them. Because it won't grow unless, unless it takes that second step. And that's why it's like, that's why I made it absolutely as simple. And are you telling me you can't do six trees? <laughs> like really, honestly, you can't do six. I, I, I've made it as small and as, as attainable as possible. So there's really no excuse to, to not reach that goal. Just reach that goal. And from then on, then it's up to you, but then it's easy. The, the hardest is always the first. So get those two out of the way, two trios, and then everything else is easier then. So thank you very much.